Indiana. Indiana. Just couldn't get past the heat in game seven. Just had to let LeBron hit that game winning shot. Just had to let him get that layup. Well, anyway, that was last year, and we're going forward. So let's look into the Pacers for the 2013 NBA season. All right. I had to go get take some notes on this team because I don't know everything about them. I do watch a lot of the East, but still, I mean, you never hear about the Pacers. You don't really know much about them. They're a quiet team. You tend to hear about the Knicks and, uh, you know, the Celtics and L.A. I mean, you know, L.A.'s in the West. You still hear about them all the time. Now, of course, you know, the Heat. But... Anyway, let's get right into it. They 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 had a pretty decent off season. I mean, they lost they lost Hasbro and Augustine and who else did they lose? Gerald Green. Those are their big losses. But bringing in people, they brought in Louis Scola and Watson, which is that's that's going to help them out a lot. I think those two players outweigh everything they lost. Those two were. I don't know about Watson, but Louis Skull is a, a a solid starter in the league, and he'll be coming off the bench. So, I mean that that's already going to make him better. Tal Hasbro, he's a thug. I'll, I'll say that right now. He's a dirty player. He's a thug. I did like watching him going up against Dwayne Wade because I think actually I don't think I I know that Dwayne Wade's a dirtier player than he is, but. You know, dirty players tend to not like each other, so none two always had some pretty good battles and uh, confrontations. You know, they don't play their same positions. But anyway, that's that. They also lost Miles Plum Plumley, which is that's not a big deal either. All right, let's get into it. Their their main positions are going to be uh, the point guard. Of course, they got the center. Actually, all their positions are pretty stacked. Uh, you got Roy Hibbert holding everything down defensively. He's a decent off, uh, offensive player too for a center. You also got you got Paul George. You know he's he's getting up there. He's a pretty good uh, point guard. And then you got George Hill. Yeah, he's I wouldn't say he's uh, elite yet, but I mean he's he's up there. You got David West, who was an All Star a few years ago, going off the coattails of uh, Chris Paul. I mean, he's not like he was five years ago, but after his injury, but the dude can still ball. The dude is still a re very good small forward. I remember there's a thing that he was about to sign with the Celtics a few years ago, and we missed out on him. I was, oh my gosh, I was mad because that was the same year that. Jeff Green had that heart surgery and wasn't able to play for a whole year, and then we missed out on him. Oh my! Who would knows what would happen? That would we probably would have beat the Heat in Game Seven because we'd actually have a decent backup. Actually, I think I would start him over Paul Pierce. He's just he's more athletic. He can shoot. He's he's tougher. But anyway, now now they got Scola. And just they're pretty they're a pretty solid team. Now that a few years ago the whole thing was that they're they're not experienced. That's that's a wash. They're experienced, they know what they're doing, they've been through some battles together. They've gotten stopped short against the Heat every single year. Except for I think the first year they're in the playoffs, the Bulls stomped them, which is if they go against the Bulls again this year. I think they're going to lose again, but hopefully it don't work out that way. Hopefully I get to see them, or the Heat, take on them, Knicks, and, uh, or no, in a perfect world, the Heat would have to go through Pacers, Bulls, Brooklyn, or at least New York. That, that would be amazing, because I'm not a Heat fan. Uh, not really I'm not a Heat fan, I'm just, I'm tired of seeing the same person. Let's get some new people in there. But right now, I probably have them 
They're fourth. I have them fourth in the East because Brooklyn. I just you got to go with the Brooklyn Celtics. I mean, Brooklyn Nets. Well, might as well call them the Brooklyn Celtics because I mean, half the Celtics bench or our starters and bench went over there. Their whole heart and soul went over there. So you got them at the two spot, at least for me, and you got. Miami, of course, you're going to have to put them at number one. I'll put Chicago at number two. And then, you know, Indiana at a four. That'll be my top four for the East. And I can throw in Knicks there for the fifth. I mean, like I said, the top five are locked for the East. Those five teams I just mentioned off will be in the top five. If they're not, you got some serious injury going on with Rose. Or Brooklyn. Or who knows where someone else gets hurt. But getting back to the Pacers, it's going to be a pretty solid team. They can only get better. They're still young. They're As long as no one gets hurt, which is pretty much you can say that for every team in the league, they're, going to, they're just going to get better. That's all I can see this team. And uh, I don't know if this is the year that they will make it to the finals. I thought last year would have been their best year, but, you know, things don't work out. But uh, as for playing the Heat, they seem to find a little how to, how to beat them a little bit more every year. They can't, it's like finding a puzzle. You get a little bit more of a piece every single time they try. So it's going to be an interesting year, but if I'm a Pacers fan, I, can't, I couldn't be anything more happier. And just late, just waiting for some revenge for next for uh, for last year and the year before. All right. Well, tell me what uh, you think.